We're now going to look at the results of our factor analysis of exercise uh, uh, smoking attitudes. So I've created my syntax. I can then click on the run button to run that syntax and we'll now go through the results. Once you get uh, results with a lot of parts like this it becomes helpful to use the left hand navigation menu to uh, go directly to certain parts. So we'll start here with the descriptive statistics. We don't necessarily need to get these but it shows us how many cases we have. We have complete data for each of the five variables and uh, it gives you some sense of their spread. Uh, you might be a bit concerned if one standard deviation was particularly large. That may suggest uh, possible outliers in, in that uh, in that variable. Here we have the correlation matrix. Uh, we've only put in five variables and uh, that means we've got a five by five matrix and we want to look at one half of the correlations. The diagonals are all one and I'm looking here to see whether there are some correlations above 0.3 and clearly there's a 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7 so there's enough correlations amongst these items for a factor analysis to um, be done. Other indicators of sampling adequacy um, are KMO and Bartlett's. And if KMO is over about 5 or point, uh, 0.5 or 0.6, then it's factorable. And if Bartlett's is significant, then that also indicates factorability. Uh, and another way, a third way to check the factorability is to look at the uh, anti-image correlation matrix and look at the diagonals and check whether they're above about 0.5 or 0.6, which they clearly are. Communalities. Uh, this indicates that we did a principal axis uh, factoring because we haven't put in all of the variance for each items. So that's the initial amount of variance uh, put in and this is the amount of variance in each item that can be explained by the factors. These are all quite high, uh, above 0.5, and therefore all of our items uh, seemingly uh, belong in the analysis. If there was something below 0.5, we may, might take note of that and uh, that particular item, and it may turn out to be um, problematic later on too. Total variance explained. Uh, we have the factors down here and the eigenvalues in this column. The total of the eigenvalues will equal the number of items. Uh, and the eigenvalues indicate the amount of variance explained by each of the factors. And this is expressed in, in these columns of percentages. So the first factor explains 58% of the variance. Second factor, 33.5%. Uh, Together, those two factors explain 92% uh, of the variance. Uh, however, for the final solution, you should use these percentages over here. These are the actual extracted final results. So two factors explains 85% of, of the variance. Uh, we can see a big drop from there, 1.6 um, uh, eigenvalues compared to 0.2, and Kaiser's criterion is to extract the number of factors uh, that have eigenvalues over 1. So SPSS has automatically gone for two factors in this case. The scree plot is a line graph showing the eigenvalues, um, factor 1, factor 2, and the at the bottom of the cliff we have the scree and these are the factors that don't really add much to our um, explained variance. So in this case, we might opt for one, two, we probably wouldn't extract the, the third factor, but these two, statistically at least, seem to be um, uh, useful factors. You need to ignore the factor matrix and go to the rotated factor matrix if you've done a Verimax or a pattern matrix if you've done an Obleman rotation and we'll continue with the interpretation of the rest of the factor analysis in the next screencast.